this. Beautiful. All right. Hello and welcome to the Hedonistic Way at Midday Show. I am Renee Main and this epic human is an absolute queen. She is a warrior. She is all things woman. She is the torchbearer and teaching us to remember. Remember who we are. Remember how we came here, what this land, the land that we reside upon, what we're here to do. She is all things about, not just like how to get through the gap, but how in order to get through the gap, we need to go beyond the gap. She is Miss Soul. She is the queen of acknowledgements. She is leading the way for us to live an all-encompassing world where we see each other, we love each other, we respect each other with absolute honour. She is real and she is unafraid of vulnerability and the freedom of expression. She has a zest for life. That is contagious Tasha Bamblett welcome to the show oh wow I don't think I've heard a better introduction um thank you so much for having me beautiful lady mm. oh thank you for being here and you know it's really easy to write something like that because you're just all of those things and you ooze all of those things and I would like, there's a part of me that goes, you know what, sometimes I think that you forget that. I think that, I think that you forget just how much you ooze this, you know, like I want to say like forgiveness come to mind, but not just like, it's just, you've got the worry, you've got the queen, but I just love how you see the gap. And I want to start there if we can, because I think I said to you a while ago, when you started to speak about the gap, I instantly resonated because I lived in Alice for a long time, a long time ago. <laughs> but the gap, that term speaks to me because like for those of you who haven't been to Alice, so to get into Alice Springs, which is the centre of Australia, there is one way in and one way out, which is very unusual for a town. So, but so it speaks to me. So, you know, it was, and I feel like it's, it's just so symbolic is what I'm saying is because, you know, when you start to speak about the gap, the only way to get through it and I not really like many people don't really talk about that getting through the gap. Like we see people who are just entering the gap. We see people who are on the other side and beyond the gap, but it's this, icky place in between that can feel really awesome but also really uncomfortable so I really loved your pre-frame around seeing in order to get through the gap to see beyond the gap so yeah just tell me more about how that come about how you see it and yeah yeah it's like you said it's I found that no one like there was no conversation around this. There, it was very hidden in the dark. And when we think of the gap, as an Indigenous woman, you know, proud to be on Indigenous land and, and you know, very connected to parts of myself that, yeah, I'm still to discover, um, because of the system and the gaps that it's created through the woman that I am and where I've come from um, and in particular being a woman I can connect to the matriarch in me and you know my grandmothers both of my grandmothers were a part of the stolen gen and yeah. there's this this huge gap you know that it's yeah. like what does that even mean you know like the stolen generation and and really we're still experiencing it today in just different forms. And um, when I think of the gap, it's like a holistic, you know, like there's gaps in education, there's gaps in the justice system and the incarcerations and the tests in custody. And um, just I feel the gaps have kept showing and shining a light that 
as an Indigenous person, and in particular a woman, because there is still a gender gap, mm. that there's, there's not the equality in that space, that I am classed and tick the boxes, you know, the mm. society's boxes, um, mm. because everyone wants to be put... <laughs> you know, put a box on things yeah. so that I understand it, um, that I was the most disadvantaged person in mm. the country. Mm. And I just, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't fathom that. And mm. it wasn't until I realised with the work that I'd done, you know, with healing and connecting to myself and my culture and the country that I realised that, hey, I am a living, like, proof and byproduct of what the gap is. Yeah. yeah. And I just thought that gives me the most advantage because I am someone who literally lives in that space, you know, lives in that gap. Um, But then I was also able to see the possibilities, the opportunities and the potential of what it's like to live outside the gap you know and there's yeah. I think everyone plays a role in this country and society yeah. as a human being and whatever you know gaps there is mm. you know I think around the whole world like it's mm. a whole world problem you know when we sure. talk about pandemics that's a pandemic of yeah. the difference and the separation and the gaps between people and human beings yeah and it was for me to see reflections of mm. the woman that you just described in your introduction mm. that I was like, wow, I am actually powerful beyond measure. Yeah. And that's what frightens me the most. And that's mm. what makes me powerful. And yeah. it was that moment, you know, there's, there's this quote of um, the two most important days. It's the one when you're born and the day when you figure out why. Mm. And for me, it was like, this is why I'm here. Mm. This is why I'm here to be the bridge and the communicator mm. to the people that are in the gap and that are on the edges and the outside and beyond mm. to understand that we all play a role in this gap, even being, you know, an existing thing yeah ah there's I can feel like my emotions just starting to like build and cultivate within um because you speak to such such powerful things such big things and as is like scary things and there's so many things that like I want to pick up on but what I'm picking up on like underneath there is you speak about you know like the gaps and how they're everywhere but then we're both in the gap but also kind of outside the gap and you're living proof of of what it's like like you were born in the gap like from the gap so I would love to hear you speak to what's some of the juice and the gold that is because I feel like you know a lot of people like we look at the gap like it's a bad thing like we're not supposed to be there so I would love to know like why is the gap so beautiful and how can we actually honor the gap more yeah putting it in like a metaphor it's when you look at the sky in a cloudy day and you know that the sun is there you know that it's shining somewhere Mm. but it isn't that beautiful moment until there's a gap of separation between the clouds Mm. Mm. and that's been life for me that's been uncovering what my identity and my belonging has come from yeah but I'm continually you know, discovering gaps within my very existence, Mm. which I find to be like the most, I'm I'm a little bit lost for words, that it's like 
it's that source of power. Mm. And it's really scary because it's the light that most frightens us, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's, yes. it's not the darkness, it's the light. Mm. And it's like, well, how big is it? And mm. how deep is it? And how, how powerful? And, um, you know, just understanding the magnitude of, of the gap was is really just being, you know, as an, as an Aboriginal woman, mm. um, you know, and I don't speak for, you know, all of the First Nations people and mm. I would never speak for anybody else. I wouldn't even speak for my son because I know he's yeah. a very whole and sovereign being himself and yeah. I believe that I don't own anything in this world mm. and... Mm nothing is here for us to own and mm. that gap is there to just be I think a symbol of experience yeah and that's what yeah. life's about it's about like what can you experience in your time here and what other experience of interaction and impact can you give mm. to others and the world and you know I've just been wanting to take as much and I think the key of this, Renee, and of the gap has been the un, like, for where I've come from and, and my ancestors, it's, it's been that, that pain. Mm. You know, it's, and I believe pain comes at a cost. Yeah. And at a cost that it can be perceived as a gift, a gift of experience and of knowledge and insight mm. and understanding and an opportunity to learn from what it is that you've been presented with, with mm. life and how it's happening for you. Mm. You know, and you may have heard that, like life's not happening to you, it's happening for you mm. and you're just the one observing it and experiencing it. And, you know, this has led to, I believe, generational trauma um mm. that word's very evident within um our indigenous communities and mm. then you go to personal trauma and your own experience of just being yeah. a, a person you know whatever gender you um identify with whatever relationships you interact with you know whatever mm. area you're born in <laughs> mm. and what societies you know classes the norms and acceptance and for me, it's been really, who do I want to be and how yeah. can I continue to adapt and evolve yeah. in the times of changing and, mm -hmm. you know, like the evolution of growth within myself of I don't have to be just my identity mm. and you know, a, a woman or a mother or a partner or a sister or a daughter or, a, or an Aboriginal, you know, mm. woman, um, mm. I can be so much more. And I think the gap for me has taught me about roles and responsibilities in the community and how, you know, being a community-raised child, how that comes at such a benefit, yet the gap I think seeing from society has a perspective on it that we want to label it as good or bad or disadvantage and advantage and it takes away the power and you know that beauty of what it really can do if you see see beyond it mm, mm, absolutely I'm just getting this this vision of you know like is that then the purpose of it is to walk through the gap because there's only really one way in one way out like it's you know there's no other option really and then is it that that when we spend time walking through that gap is to just like release all the identities release all the labels like release it and just shed it and to experience what we are beyond beyond all of that right. yeah and I just think when you strip back the layers of who we are, you know, the, that question that I think, you know, it's the simple but yet the most 
probably hardest unanswerable yeah. question who who are we who am I yeah. and that really allows you to strip back the layers and experience you know because everyone when I say everyone like human you know mm. and life itself yeah. lives, lives in that gap you know yeah within, within it and um when you go through that and you strip back everything all is left is the human experience mm. Mm. and and that is you know our needs our wants our desires um and yes they're all different and everyone's unique in that aspect but mm. when you strip back like the purest thing of it is mm. just love yeah yeah so how do we, you know, like, I and I'll just speak, like, freely, like, we've gone through, like, you know, well, we've fucked it up, right? Like, you know, I feel like we've fucked it up on the grandest of scales and albeit probably with the most well intentions, I don't know. But what I love is something that I feel like you bring and I'm so glad that like you've landed in this space where, you know, where you're able to then go, okay, like how do we honour everyone? How does everyone honour everyone? How do we peel everything back so then all that is re revealed is love, all that's remaining is love? How do we get to that point? Yeah. It's through... It's so, you know, we have to find the gaps within ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. we have to like, we have to find the gaps within ourselves to see through and to allow the, the light shine. And, mm. you know, and that's uncomfortable and that's, mm. that's ugly. And <laughs> I basically call that shame, mm. you know, the yeah. shame and the guilt and the regret and, yeah um privilege you know and privilege is a big word that I don't you know use lightly because I believe we all have privileges mm. um some just to an extent of mm. you know outer characteristics of you know what your biological makeup make is as yeah. a privilege to you know inner experiences of life and you know, privileges of things that you have no control over as an individual human being, you know, things yeah. around you. I just believe that if you live in Australia today, like we are privileged as a country yeah. of the benefits that we have and how we, you know, are to live and, you know, the pandemic that we're in, it's like, well, some states have better privileges right now than others. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there's always privileges, um, at hand and I think to really unfold and to you know understand the gaps mm. you've, you've got to go within yourself and yeah. I believe you know connection to yourself will unfold that and allow yourself to understand the shame that comes from your own personal experience and the stereotypes that you may have you know, taken on from mm. parents, society, siblings, mm. social media, um, mm. or that you've created yourself unconsciously mm. or subconsciously mm. from your experiences that you've had with human life um, yeah. that allows you to shut off or open up or, you know, mm. let go or um, shape your identity to who you yeah to who you feel you need to be mm. to survive yeah yeah um yeah so it's definitely about yeah the human need to survive and feel accepted you know um within society because mm. in all reality we can't live within just with us you know alone we, we need mm. people we need community we need others around us to survive and, and thrive mm. and, and just understand and grow as a human being yeah 
Yeah, absolutely. And for that to happen, like, I absolutely agree. Like, I feel like that we forget that, you know, we forget that, you know, like in this evolution, like we're here to connect, we're here to bond and to share with others. So I really love that you, you speak to that because it's bringing in that, that humanness that I feel like that we, we forget, you know. Um, so I'm just... I want to move on to like ask you about like where you're at now because I feel like that you've just had this massive in the last I don't know um, I'm just I don't know when I first met but like you and I first met but you know in the last 12 months or so like you've just gone through this massive like blossoming of it's been so beautiful to witness and so I do want to ask you about that but I have this question that keeps on circling and I kind of feel nervous to ask, but I'm going to ask it. Um, when you speak, like I, like I feel like you speak to like the dualism, but the beauty in the dualism. And sometimes it's not until we feel that separation that we can appreciate the beauty. And I get this, like these words that keep on coming, like they keep on surfacing to me. And that is like, I can't imagine, and tell me if I'm wrong, like feel free to pull me up and, you know, whatever, call me whatever name you want. No <laughs> space, no judgment yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I can't fathom like being, an Indigenous woman and having that sense of belonging to this land and this earth, like in particularly Australia, let's say, like that sense of belonging because I think that, you know, and again, that's probably another follow-up question is because, you know, for those of you who don't know or perhaps aren't in Australia, like, you know, it's like you know, the Indigenous religion is the land, isn't it, right? Like it's dream time is the land. And I mm. think that people think that, you know, like dream time is this something that happens when you're asleep, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, but it's it's not. And so, and so that, so when I say you belong, like you belong to the land, that sense of belonging, but then also with your experience, You've also been that sense of like being outcasted and that where, or like you've seen as inferior. So therefore kind of potentially don't belong. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Like how the fuck do you navigate that touch? I'm still doing it. And I just think, um, you know, and, and again, Indigenous people from First Nations Australians, um, you know, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, we all have different experiences. We all have different connections and, you know, all due to system and assimilation and colonisation and stolen generation that, this is where separation and different experiences have evolved. And I think, you know, for me, I believe that our culture has evolved and is continually evolving with the times of how, like you said, I, how I'm just trying to navigate thriving in today's society as a businesswoman, mm. as a mother. Mm trying to make impact, yet still trying to connect to, you know, my cultural traditions and laws that for some Indigenous people we don't have or, mm. or we don't have access to mm. or it's not, it's not like seen in our space or practice in our space. Um, mm. You know, and lots of lots of our traditional culture and law, Alawari, has been dissolved, has been mm. lost in translation, in communication, and in in 
times and errors and you know I'm really lucky to be born to who I'm born to you know in time of of now um, because I know my parents had you know their their children of stolen gens and mm. you know it, even their age group there's there's parent there's people of their age that have been a part of the stolen generation I just think the different locations yeah you know, um, allow different situations to unfold and yeah you know I just think navigating with what I have mm. and coming back to gratitude of mm. fuck I am grateful for who I am and yeah. what I have mm. um you know and how I've been able to live with, like I call it the third space mm. yeah so it's like the society and the and the mainstream of you know non-indigenous and I just say like indigenous to the land mm. um there's this way of living or perception that if you're not connected to the connection of the the lands and the the culture you see things differently yeah and I live in this third space where it's like I live here mm. But my soul and my spirit and my heart and my DNA and my connections that I can't see or fathom or, or live with, it's inside of me and it's here. Yeah. So then there's two parts of me, like I said, that, you know, I'm made up of so many different gaps <laughs> mm. that, yeah. that live in that third space. And it's just navigating, like, what are the things that I can see and I can touch mm. and I can do while also just trying to tap into that like cellular memory of I know you get it like the DNA mate mm -hmm. of of where I come from you yeah. know the, the strengths and if I could envision you know in my dream time state that may be sleeping or that may be going to another place within mm -hmm. You know what does that look like and, and who am I and, and where's my place and what's my purpose and what am I doing and, and for me it's trying to it's trying to live in a wake state with also carrying that inside of me and I know how easily it is for me to tap and drop in and everyone's different but as soon as I can go into you know breath and ground like my feet hit the floor and you know, my mind is 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 not there. Like it's so open, and you know, and it's like a daily practice. You know, like anyone, we say confidence is a practice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody's born with it, and you know, something special about what I have is I have been born with it, and it's mm -hmm. just up to me to practice to connecting to that place and those, those parts of me and you know just navigating what I know but also I think it's really important that we understand what we don't know mm -hmm. and that's been a really big part of like I don't know that so mm -hmm. I want to know that or I need to know that and what does yeah. what does knowing that um play a part of and yeah. for me it's just like continuing to to learn and grow and I'm like addicted to self-development and and yeah. learning you know about things of all things in life from all people because when I learn more about other people I get to learn more about parts of myself that I didn't know or like I said I'm ever discovering so it's just navigating through human experience and you know spiritual experience yeah. and guidance yeah. and um you know the wisdom innate wisdom that kind of sits in there and you kind of I go into this transmission of saying things that I'm like I don't know how to explain it um yeah. but the articulation is kind of evident when somebody yeah. can receive it yeah that's so beautiful thank you and that's 
like what I get is I love that like you were talking about it's like this and then this and then you're here this this third space and that's something that I've been thinking about a lot lately is because that there is like do you feel like it's not it's not like this or this it's this plus this equals this yeah. you know and that this is us or it's a new solution or it's a new human or it's a new whatever it is it's a new opportunity it's a new honoring right and so I feel like breaking out of that mold of it's either this or this and just widening up our lens yeah. a little bit and I feel like once we do that then you know like the like you know not just you know like the acknowledgement and the respect and the honor, but even like the appropriation no longer exists because it's just celebrated, right? Like it just is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like you're saying, it's about, I just believe it's like a new way of life. Mm. Yeah. You know, and my son, you know, our children will experience new way of life mm. that we you know as different generations play a role of just planting seeds mm. you know yeah. and then sometimes it's you know we continue to water it throughout our life maybe never seeing it, it grow or blossom mm -hmm. um but it's up to the next generation as the seed to determine on what shape or form it takes to grow mm -hmm. and you know, and then it just, it's the cycle of life, which I think the yeah. tree represents beautifully yeah. you know, within the seasons. And I think the seasons are, you know, us as beings and, and life as we know it, it's like, it's a yeah. season. And I think I've really experienced a lot of, a lot of that reflection and understanding of seeing myself in certain ways, you know, yeah. within um you know this global pandemic that we've been going through mm -hmm. and really again seeing through the cracks and the gaps of yeah. what's missing and, and what are we not seeing or speaking about and yeah. you know sitting with that place because I know how powerful it is when we when we go there and we give power to that yeah yeah absolutely I know that's been a massive journey for me in the past few weeks is what am I not seeing like, I think that's such an important question that we need to ask, you know, not build evidence on weighing up either side or wherever, but just going, you know what, like, let's just look at all of it. Like, ask, like, what am I not seeing? What are those, those gaps in the middle? So I, yeah, absolutely agree. Um, I want to ask you about everything that you're doing now, because as I was saying a bit earlier, like, in the past like 12 months or so like you have just it's probably longer actually isn't it like you've just gone mm. and opened right up so you know you were miss well were uh miss soul but then you've birthed queen of acknowledgements and you really have flourished so I really want to ask you about that unraveling for you like yeah um it's been it's been a hell of a ride and you know that ride required all parts of me to come to surface you know me as a woman and um then me as a mother yeah. and what that required of me to play and yeah. then as a partner you know, and I created yeah. this beautiful relationship with my fiancé in this time, you know, within a year. And mm. that's played a really big part on just how I'm able to back myself and the confidence and the power and understanding, you know, how to be in my feminine but also my masculine and what role that plays within life and business and how mm. I, you know, show up in presence and, yeah. you know, this Miss Soul had come through as, as I was just starting to find my voice. Mm. And I, to me, Miss Soul, Miss Soul is me, you know, yeah. and, and like 
Miss Soul is a part of, like, it's the inner, the inner voice, you know, that I was really navigating and allowing to come through and transmit and, and hold space and be in presence, you know, with power yet grace, you know, and mm. elegance, being being bold and, you know, here but also very soft and gentle. Yeah. Um, you know, that you you wanting to bring people um, to you and, you know, I even created a whole like physical presence you know my, my head wraps and there was there was this this presence of of being taller and mm. you know being being more in my aura you know out here yeah. instead of yeah. in here and yeah. um Miss Soul was a real representation of that and it led into you know really finding my voice and speaking mm. a little bit more um and then within this year I've really gained that inner confidence, you know, than self-confidence, which again is, is a daily practice because there's times I wake up and I'm like, yeah. who is this girl? Yeah. <laughs> Where is Queen Acknowledgements? Yeah. We please come to the stage. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's, there's times, you know, and I think that name was scary and bold, but also the challenge of it was like, I'm, I'm here to do this and to be this and and you know what is what does queen mean and you know queen mm. means like there's a demanding of of presence while also being held accountable and responsible for playing a role of of impact you know yeah, yeah. And how could I do that with with my message of of connection to self culture and country for everyone you know accessible mm. for everyone to be in a safe space where then they felt in control and in power of of how they were then going to make impact and that's what I really wanted to be a stand for queen acknowledgement was about acknowledging the gaps acknowledging you know who you are and where you are acknowledging the things that you don't know acknowledging the shame the guilt yeah. the stereotypes with power and then also yeah. acknowledging hey I have a role and a responsibility to myself to this country to the to this time to this generation to this people to the future mm. of how I want to implement and walk on this land like walk mm. when I say walk like it's literally how you're living you know like mm. because you know our souls are the bear of our feet you know you know the, the bottoms mm. of our of our very body that touches this earth so you know and that's why my soul was like it's a pure connection you know mm. and um is this allowing a safe space for people to walk with purpose and understand mm -hmm. that wherever you are um keep walking with purpose and navigating through the gaps of life mm -hmm. um, and we can do that together you know in solidarity and and in in honor and respect um of one another you know understanding that we are different and we have differences of opinions and that's okay but everyone's voice is valid to be heard and everyone's presence is valid to be seen you know next to one another and for me it's like no one is better or lesser than mm. the other it's about understanding you know that you have power and what that is and walking with purpose is about that. And that's what leads me to, you know, this really big project that I've been thinking of for, you know, in creation of um, for almost a year now. And that's walking, um, walking with purpose, which is an initiative of me walking a thousand kilometers in 50 days um, within Darwin, so from Darwin, Bagot Reserve community, all the way down to Tennant Creek, you know, in honour of the parts of me um, mm. that I never got to have due to mm. due to my grandmother being a part of the Soul and Gem. And for me, it's like the parts of you don't need to remain lost. 
if I choose to return home. And for me, it's yeah. to, it's like the purest thing I can do to connect to myself, my culture um, and the country with by actually walking on it myself and being able to tell the story while on the ground and, you know, inviting people to walk with me. Mm. You know, with it whether you're following on the journeys by social media or whatever story it, you know, plays mm. out to be or whether you're physically there with me, it's, it's, we get to walk this journey mm. and uncover the true history of the mm. pain and the trauma um, and everything that's been, you know, embedded in this country because the country mm. is, it's like the book, the guide of, yeah what's walked before and I believe when we call for unity um, yeah. to take place and when you ask, when I feel I'm asking other people to walk with me, it yeah. allows more power and vibrations that we get to tell a new story going yeah. forward on how yeah. to heal together and we allow the Indigenous people as a collective to continue to be supported in their healing journey um, mm. on this way. So for me, that's like a legacy. That's like mm. a life. Not saying that, you know, life for me is done once I do it, but it's it's a real it's a real beginning of possibilities of what I'm here to do and create, you know, impact and change yeah. and continuing to be a stand and a voice for that and I'm going to continue walking you know on my own or with whoever is there with me yeah you know and doing that in little ways that I've been doing for years has been you know holding events that I can get to hold safe spaces um you know work in schools because I believe that the next generation is the key holder to like I said they're the seeds and we want to yeah. nurture and nourish them as much as we can for them yes. to grow strong foundations, not just, I'm just not about, you know, Indigenous kids in the community. Mm -hmm. It's about the whole, like there's always a minority at schools, you know, the Indigenous kids yeah. as a presence. And I want all kids from all nations and cultures to understand the uniqueness and understand the country that they live in and, and the culture yeah. that's here and offer for them to understand and partake in, you know, as yeah. as it gives them responsibility to stand yeah. up for yeah. what's right. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that there's a right or wrong way, but whatever yeah. they believe to feel right and passionate about yeah. and, you know, understand purpose of we are all here occupying the same space yeah. and place together. How can we do it respectfully and yeah. powerfully? And, um, yeah, that's just that's where I'm at. <laughs> Oh, that's so beautiful Tash it's it's oh I just I love it I love it and I love you know just witnessing that you know witnessing that blossom and just where you're going with it I think it's so beautiful and so needed and it feels like the right time it's like we're ready for it right like I really feel like it's this this poignant moment you know and you speak to the next generation and, um, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because I, I mean, like it's through my like very narrow lens, but like through, through my girls and through how they're getting educated, I feel like there's, you know, I feel like there's probably still a lot that we can do, but there's definitely a lot more conversation and understanding that that is happening. And I was listening to um, my daughter, is of course like she's being um, remote learning and they're learning history at the moment and funnily enough like you know like you were on the show today and and so but um the history teacher was talking about you know um about um our nation's first people and about the English when you know and the colonization of the country and she asked a really um, like a, a really good question and I was like oh I've never heard like anyone ask that and so the teacher asked about why do you think that people would think that 
um, the Indigenous population back then was quite passive in the way that they didn't fight, right? And, um, you know, and she, she, wanted, um, she wanted the class's feedback on that. And, and my daughter wrote back and she's like, well, they didn't fight. And so, and that was there, like the teacher was like, right, by the next class, I want you to think about it from this perspective and have something in mind. So I'd really love to just hear your thoughts about how we're educating and, you know, and perhaps even like as parents, like what, what conversations can we have, you know, yeah. with our kids? And um, I would love to hear your experience, like from you, your grow, like for when you were at school growing up to where mm. like your son is, is growing up now. What is the difference there? Can you see the evolution happening? Yeah. So primary school for me, um, was really blessed to go to the primary school that I did and I was one of those kids that had their mother at the school so my mother was a teacher's aide and going through um, her studies while I was at primary school um, so you know I had my mom and you know all my friends that was her auntie so you know she played a really big role and um, at the place but I know that the school that I was at they had this section called Maniga. And it was a section where not that it was intentionally segregating, but all the Indigenous kids went to that school and it was at the back of the school and that's where they did their classrooms, you know, with Indigenous, ah. indigenous teachers and they had, like, um, you know, other teachers in there. And then my mum, there was a few of us Indigenous kids, my mum said that I was going to go to the mainstream school. So I was going mm -hmm. to go in the classes with everybody else. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it at the time. And I was like, why wouldn't I want to, like, why wouldn't you want me with, like, all of my cousins and, yeah. you know, my people and they get me. Yeah. And, and I didn't understand it at the time. But as, as I went on, I, I realised that she was really preparing me for that third world. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. not just in education um, because it allowed me to, you know, I was in a class that I was, you're constantly like, oh, where are you at? You know, and that's what education does. Like you have to get to a certain standard. And, mm. you know, so then I was a very competitive person in sports and, mm. um you know, understanding that it not just prepared me in the education world, but also society and how I could communicate and how I could stand in my difference um, and still communicate to mm. somebody that didn't come from my world because I was prepared and I learned to live and grow and educate myself in that yeah. world. Yeah. That when I went home, it was different. It was a different world at home. You know, the yeah. language was different. The communication was different. The sense mm. of humor, the interactions, the, the yeah. way we lived and ate and slept were different, mm. you know, and people are like, what does that mean? And, you know, I know a lot of my non-Indigenous friends, when they'd come, it was, mm. it was really different. <laughs> mm. It was just different. And the community vibe, an example, that every time my, my friends would come around, like, we would clean and mm. we would we would build things at the backyard and we would and then yeah you know my friends parents were like oh they like they never clean but my kids loved it because it was just a part of the community yeah you, know, you were yeah. you were allowed access to anything at the house food yeah. devices every, anything that yeah. was there was was theirs yeah. to use um you know and then you know, food was a very, like, we share in festive and, and foods and, you know, my dad was a chef. So there was just things that were different in my house to other people's houses. Yeah. And, you know, I went to high school and I was able to to graduate uh, year yeah. 12, which was a big yeah. thing because I was the first one in my family too. So, mm -hmm. um, but I remember a history teacher very vividly, um, speaking of like methodology, you know, and about like things that aren't real, but stories and 
And yes. um, I think it was like Greek, maybe, or the Egyptian who we were yeah. studying at the time. Um, and I remember her saying, oh, it's, it's just like, um, it's like in the Indigenous culture when they'd say um, that they'd say to the kids um, that the bunyip wasn't real to keep them away from the river. And I was really like, <laughs> and I was sitting there listening to this, you know, 40, mid 40 year old white woman telling a class of majority of white kids. And then there was me and maybe, you know, some other ethnic backgrounds, Turkish or Lebanese or so. And I was really like, but it is real. Yeah. And then she was like, no, it's not. It's, you know, it's like how when they, you know, the kids tell the, them, um, you know, use, use the police because you'll get locked up or taken away. And I was really like, I was, I think I was about year nine at that time and I was really like, how do I feel about this? It was really, because yeah. I didn't, because I didn't know, I never had somebody that was in that space at that time speaking up about it or mm. correcting or, or having, having, you know, the confidence to, to speak, you know, mm. adamant. And um, I just remember going home and telling mom and I was really like, they're saying the bunyip's not real. <laughs> my, and then it, it come, you know, and that was a really special thing about my home that mom and dad would tell us stories. And, you know, I had have many family members that will give real life experiences about the river and the bunyip and, and mm. things like that. And, you know, there's, there's many other um you know spirits and stuff that mm. we we believe and it was just really hard to hear for me that my beliefs and my culture was invalid and was used as you know a, a myth of a story yeah. example that yeah. I was dismissed of who I am and what I believe and yeah. it was really yeah it just it just was never you know acknowledged and mm. I remember in schools that we were never, Indigenous kids were never asked to do the acknowledgements for mm -hmm. the assemblies and mm -hmm. it was a real big kind of, it was a shame thing that mm -hmm. we don't know how to do it and we don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. I remember being asked, it wasn't until I was about in year 10 mm -hmm. for the first time that I was ever asked to, yeah. you know, do a public acknowledgement and he was, you know, white principles <laughs> yeah male predominant and was yeah. like he here's the sheet we just want you to read off the sheet yeah yeah it's and it was tokenism right totally and I you know even my brother he's three years younger than me and mm. we're at high school for some time together and he was asked to do you know traditional dancing which he grew up with which was really lucky and he was you know quite blessed to do that because I never did we didn't have women that were teaching mm. cultural passing on cultural dance and stories like back in my time yeah. um and then I remember him saying no I don't want to do it and I was like why because he's a great dancer you know mm. very good entertainer and performer and, mm. and I was like why and he's like nah like my, my friends, I just I just don't feel comfortable doing it. I don't feel safe. Mm. And I was just like, wow. Here mm. he is, this, this proud, very, like, cultured and, mm. you know, go into the community and, you know, paint up and, mm. you know, do that. It was just, yeah. And it, it was mm. really, it was really sad that I was like, damn, now we feel ashamed to even yeah. pride in our culture. Yeah. You know, and over time you know 10 years down my son has learned how to do an acknowledgement in kinder oh. you know and and schools are doing it um as part of their assemblies and I'm talking about like the whole school the whole class yeah. is learning it um you know I've been engaged to do many workshops and facilitations which is mm. great because they're yeah. taking initiatives and an opportunity yeah. of a community resource 
And I believe Indigenous people are the purest resource. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I think, it, you know, it gave power to Indigenous people as I'm an advocate to say, hey, whatever you know or whatever, you know, experience you have, like you're a resource, so use that. Like that comes with yeah. power and, and responsibility to, yeah. you know, teach and share yeah. what, we, what we have. Um, yeah. And I just see that so evident in so many different ways ways but like you said there's there's still so much more we can do um you know and I believe our elders you know my grandmother there it's like our elders they're the last ones that have in today's time they're the last ones that had you know their full blood connections they're they're, they lived on the land they live traditionally like they're they're almost like they're at the end. Yeah. Like I and, never thought of that time. And I understand, you know, we talk about 230 years of colonization. Our yeah. elders today, they're the children. Yeah, yeah. They're the children of that time. And and I feel such urgency to do this work. Yes. My grandmother's still alive, you know, and mm. I just think it's a legacy to continue not just her story, but the story of those that yeah. were stolen. Or, yeah. or or feel lost still today or you know yeah. trying to find their way back home because once they're gone like the whole the whole cultural connection and the stories of of yes. them they go with them and I yeah. believe like if anyone is in a position I urge action to be taken to yeah tell the untold stories and, yeah. and allow these voices to have projection and space to be heard because once that's gone like that's mm-hmm. it like that my nan is my only connection to that land up there yeah. right now and um you know I was really hoping to do women's business but because of her health and the times like that's that's something that I I window feels like it's getting smaller. it's smaller and my my like my fate is out of my hands on that experience or not like I may get to be able to do it but I'm not sure if that's going to be with my grandmother present yeah. with me or not you know and and all of the stories you know she was born to a full blood Aboriginal woman mm. it's traditional yeah <laughs> yeah. And you know her her father was a white man, but she's mm. the purest connection that we've yeah. got. And and then that, it's a that's right it. passage. That's it, you know. And I just yeah. think if I don't do something about yeah. capturing and telling the story in a way that you know the world can hear it, but for me, it's I want my son to know this when yeah. he grows up. Yeah. This story that, you know, my children that aren't here yet, that haven't, you know, yeah. been given life, uh, have this opportunity and this access yeah. to parts of themselves of who they are. Yeah, absolutely. So when that's a pandemic in itself. Yeah, that's, that's exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, and I'm so glad that you spoke to that because I hadn't even, like, that penny hadn't even dropped for me. And I could feel that the urgency of the time but I didn't connect the why so when you speak to anyone listening who can take action like who are these people what action do we need to take to make sure that like do we capture these stories how like what do you feel like what would be you know if you could go okay right like this is the action that we that we need to take to make sure that this legacy and this rite of passage is Mm -hmm. continued and honored yeah oh well you know I'm trying to create a whole project around capturing the story so there's people in positions that um capture stories tell stories podcasters um interviewers documenters filmers Mm -hmm. photographers um people who you know speak like allow space for this have time and voice and presence um because like I said we're 
we're at the end of, of the children of, you know, the purest connection to culture and those traditions and laws and, you know, slowly but surely, you know, their time is, is coming to an end of, of their journey and yeah. it's up to us who are in prime or, you mm. know, beginning at our blossom phase to yeah. continue to, you know, fill our bags with knowledge and it's mm. getting yourself in Indigenous spaces, um, mm. Indigenous understanding. And I know there's lots of people say, do your own education, which, yes, you know, I'm still trying to do my own education as an Indigenous woman and I think we'll yeah. always be able to have self, you know, awareness of learning and improving yeah. ourselves. Yeah. But I think, you know, there's always somebody out there that has a story that you don't know um, yeah. and that you can benefit from. So the only way you can do that is if you ask and you get yourself yeah. with the right people, um, come with, you know, purest intentions, yeah. you know, find events and facilitators and, and workshops that you can involve yourself in. Um, mm. And I suggest if you are a parent, learn with your children. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You know, like learn with your children because they are the ones who are, you know, at the advantage of, of their life, of, of education and resources right now, that it's, you know, learn with them, read the books that they're reading with them. Um, even if you go to a workshop, the workshops that I've, that I've held, you know, acknowledging respectfully and powerfully mm -hmm. workshops, I actually tell parents to bring their kids. They're like, oh, you know, I've got children. I'm like, perfect, bring them. Yeah. Yeah. bring them because they need to see this they need to see this light and this vulnerability that you have in a person and and seeing you change to a better human and they need to learn what you're learning because when that ends with you they have the power to continue that to say hey yeah. my mom or my dad or whoever it is in their life they started this and they were passionate about this and making change yeah. because they seen a person for the person you know, yeah. but also accepted them for all that they are, Yeah. you know, without yeah. judgment. And I just believe it gives, you know, education is the greatest tool and knowledge, um, but it is nothing without action. So, yeah, self in yeah. those spaces and, you know, I'm here, reach out to me. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I fucking know nothing. I know fuck all. <laughs> um <laughs> But, you know, what I do know, I am, am here to share yeah. anything that I know I don't own. You know, it yeah. was from somewhere else and I'm here to share my experiences so they can help and support or make somebody else feel seen and valid, validated in their yeah. experience as a human experience. Um, and we all, we all have the human right to know and understand and I think be aware of this beautiful land and mm. the first people's culture that mm. we, live, we live on and we live with. And, yeah. you know, I just think it gives greater power to the Indigenous people, the First Nations yes. people and the culture when all of us mm. can share and walk together. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, Jama, sister. <sighs> Tash, my heart is just exploding and it's filled with love um thank you so much for hanging out with me today um it's been yeah it's been amazing and just to have this conversation feels so important and um I'm really honored and glad that you know, we cross paths and I get to witness you in your journey and, you know, thank you for being on the show, but thank you for doing all that you do and you've got a big mission and I'm here with you to support you every single step of the way. So thank you so much, gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much for being you and, you know, the connection that we share, I, I cherish it today and forever so thank you everyone that's you know tuned in I hope you take something from it and you know continue to support what you're about Renee and 
know, continue to learn and grow together. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, gorgeous. And I'll put all Tasha's notes on um on the in the show notes. So stay tuned for that. All right, guys. I will be back next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>